Yeah, potential scary, potential best things. I'm going to jump past the first running back we have this week for our rocket or docket for buying the hype for next year. And I'm going to skip past Sanders because I want to talk about Dobbins first because he seems to be kind of somebody that's in this like too great, too little, too whatever he is. We've seen Mark Ingram in this offense a couple of years ago, ran for you know 200 times and was a top 10 running back because of the touchdown equity, which is what we chase in this backfield, which is why I love J.K. Dobbins, not just because of that, because I think Chris and Lauren, I think a lot of people missed late last year once he got healthy, and I put that in quotes because there's speculation of how healthy it was, but that final four games, like he started to look like the Dobbins we hoped to see. We're talking about 100-yard games, finding the end zone, and that was without, oh, that Lamar Jackson guy, even on the field with him. So, Meany, Top 15 lock, in my opinion. I think he's knocking on the RB1 door. Am I rocketing too much by myself? Am I am I having too much fun, Jason Momoa style? <laughs> I don't think so. I believe we were in on him last year as like a, maybe a buy low candidate. And of course, you know, the injuries kind of slowed him down a little bit. But what you alluded to towards the end of last year, you could really see, you know, like a little bit of a giddy up in his step. And I loved his first season too. I mean, you got to go back to, to 2020, but he was, you know, a standing touchdown machine. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good call. He was standing on his head. I got the game log here from 2020 <laughs> and it was, you know, basically a touchdown every single game from week 11 on like 15, 70 and a touchdown, 11, 71 and a touchdown, 13, 53 and a touchdown, 14, 64, a touchdown, 11, 77, a touchdown, 13, 162 touchdowns, like not really involved through the air not getting a ton of carries because they had multiple backs at that time, like you mentioned earlier, and then a running quarterback in Lamar Jackson, but still super efficient with anywhere from 10 to 15 touches. And even though Lamar is kind of treated as a goal line back himself, quote unquote, JK Dobbins was finding a way to get inside the end zone. It's going to be a new offense this year. I don't think it's going to be heavy, heavy run, but this is a team last year that ran the fewest 11 personnel now this year with a new offensive play caller, they got weapons all over the field. So, you know, defensive defenders are going to have to, they're going to have a hard time. Really? Who are you going to help? Are you going to help cover the mismatch with Andrews? Are you, is Odell going to be able to bring it? You know, he's a great route runner. We know that about him. Zay flowers is going to have a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. This is going to, and then you have to worry about the dual threat in Lamar Jackson. So that could open up a lot of avenues for JK Dobbins. I'm in. I don't have him aggressively ranked like 15, but I would not be shocked if he flirted with RB1 status this year. Yeah, I'm I'm in the same boat with you, except I think I lean a little bit even more to Jake's side, where I do think that he is a lock in the top of uh, the uh, RB15 and up. Now, if we look at some of the names that could be ranked ahead of him, we're talking like Dalvin Cook, Aaron Jones, Kenneth Walker. I mean, those are names where we're really not even sure what's going to happen with them. Plus, we have the A.J. Dillon situation with Aaron Jones, timeshare with Kenneth Walker, and Charbonnet, or Carbonet, or whatever, whatever. What are we calling him again? Pop a bottle Charbonnet. of Charbonnet? Yeah, we're yeah. we'll popping bottles yeah, of Charbonnet. You know, Chardonnay, just like Chardonnay. even though you don't really pop wine bottles, that's more champagne. Anyway, oh, champagne Chardonnay. Mm, mm, I'm digging this. Can you tell go. I really want a mimosa right now? So I do think that there's a place where they can finish, um, where he can finish up uh, flirting, like you said, RB1 status, which is RB12 and above. Um, but yeah, I think definitely uh, top 15, I think is in his future. All right, so you mentioned one name and go back to you, meaning because you said you liked it, but not quite as much with Ken Walker or JK Dobbins for you. I think I would probably pass on Walker. Yeah, I would I would lean with J.K. Dobbins, I think, in that situation. I, I don't like the ADP. It's so early, but I know I'll just reference underdog. And again, you can make a case for everyone best ball. And I know J.K. hates best ball, but um, <laughs> Kenneth Walker. Well, I, I hate dynasty. No, no, no. Make it clear. Yeah. I, I hate yeah. the argument, but in best ball. But in, like, best, in best ball. ball. I know. I agree. And you're not wrong. <laughs> So today on Mean Streets, we'll go over like the top 24 in terms of ADP and and Kenneth Walker sitting there at like 48 and J.K. Dobbins in at 58. So it's not a big difference, but 10 picks later, I guess at that point of the draft, you have to, you know, pick your pick what you want. I would pass. I would I'm going to have more shares of J.K. Dobbins. I'll say that. OK, well, then let me ask you this one, Lauren. If I told you today because it's speculative and the news just came out, Brees Hall, by the way, not at OTA, it's not a surprise, but Brees Hall. Every doctor report out there has said he's ahead of Javante Williams. Javante Williams is more the concern mm -hmm. for week one, but Brees Hall should be out there with week one. But what if I told you, let's go back to Saquon Barkley from two years ago. 
obviously when I say this, I'm not going to say, and then he rolls his ankle in week five. But if I told you Brees Hall wasn't Brees Hall until October, so the first mm -hmm. four weeks of limited poor performances potentially, or J.K. Dobbins for the full season, would you take the weight on Brees Hall or would you just take J.K. Dobbins? Mm, oh, that's a really good question because for me, this is going to boil down to how am I sitting in my draft? Um, I don't mind passing up on Brees Hall if that were the case, that he is not going to be healthy until October. I don't mind passing on him to do J.K. Dobbins because then I can kind of fill up on, I don't know, a different back besides Brees Hall or maybe a different position besides the running back position and then wait on J.K. Dobbins. Uh, yeah, that's a tough one because I love Brees Hall so much, but um, I'm going to bank on the health of J.K. Dobbins for the season as opposed to having to wait until October. It's a tough one. I'll lean Brees. I lean Brees. It's tough. It's yeah, a top it's, 30 it's pick. Really it's an expensive pick to, to spend on Brees Hall knowing that, yeah, he's – Maybe he won't be full go until October. Maybe they ease him back in a handful of touches. But, you know, they kind of eased him into his rookie role as well last year. And man, he was great. I was at the game in New York uh, between the Jets and the Bengals, and he just had like a 65-yard run. I think it was a catch and a run. And he just looked so explosive. So they've done a good job kind of bolstering the offensive line over the past couple of years. you got a capable quarterback in Aaron Rodgers. I'm sure they're going to score some points. They're going to move the football. I'll lean with him because Dobbins, who knows? Here's my, Dobbins Here's may not about be that. go either. I don't like the fact that the Jets drafted Abaconda. Like, yeah, it does like, stink. like that's they drafted a running back like that. Again, it was what fifth round, if I remember correctly for him. Yeah. But I mean, that's still a relevant running back that a lot of people thought could go in round four, maybe yeah. depending on the right team, even round three. Point being, you had Zonovan Knight surprise people last year. You still have Michael Carter and then you draft Alvin Conda. Oh, wait, yeah. Bob Benanconda. So, like, you still – somebody's got to get cut out of that room, period. Like, Michael Carter might – maybe he's the one that gets left out all of a sudden being two years removed, and all of a sudden he's – I know, but somebody's – there's too many running backs. You don't carry yeah. a whole four. And a new um, regime, right? That regime didn't draft Michael Carter, I don't believe. That was, right. Was so, I, I do have concerns for Carter, Jeff but I also bring up the fact of, like, what if – like, this is why I probably don't have any Brees Hall this year. It's not even just the injury, but just what if it's a 55% share the entire year? Like, what if they just don't get away from we're going to use them 15 to 17 times instead of 18 to 22? That, that's, that's a little bit of my concern.